Hi, this is Manos Brilakis, and this is case 141 for the manual of percutaneous coronary interventions. This is a case in which a double DK crash standing technique was performed for two adjacent bifurcations, as well as uh, the so called investment procedure was used for a vessel dissection. The patient was an elderly gentleman who presented with non ST elevation myocardial infarction. He did have multiple comorbidities and also he was fairly large, which explains in part the poor angiographic image quality. However, he was found to have significant disease in the left main as well as the proximal LAD and the proximal and mid circumflex. He had a left dominant circulation. You can see here better the proximal LAD lesion as well as the distal left main lesion. And then the right coronary artery was a small non-dominant vessel. And IVUS was performed in the left main, and it demonstrated significant stenosis along with um, areas of calcification. The patient was referred for coronary bypass graft surgery, but he was turned down, and he was referred for PCI instead. We decided to use femoral approach. And uh, given that there was a proximal and uh, mid-left uh, main lesion, we decided to wire immediately upon engagement to minimize pressure dampening and potential hemodynamic compromise. We decided to not use hemodynamic support because the patient had a normal left ventricular systolic function and his wet pressure was within normal limits. So we engaged with an 8 friends uh, EBU-375 guide catheter, and then we advanced uh, a workhorse guide wire into the circumflex. However, when we did the first injection, we can see that we have a problem. Actually, we have lost the flow into the circumflex, which may in part be explained by the significant lesion that the patient had in the mid-circumflex before. So we have a situation of acute vessel closure, one of the three major complications of percutaneous coronary interventions, the other two being perforation and equipment loss of entrapment. This one was most likely caused by dissection given the pre-existing very severe lesion in the circumflex. And when a dissection occurs, the first question is whether we have a guide wire in the vessel, because if we do, Treatment is fairly simple by stent delivery, but if we don't, then we have to advance a guide wire into the distal true lumen, confirm that the wire is indeed in the true lumen, and then place a stent. And if we cannot, then the options are to either send the patient for emergency coronary bypass or to do medical therapy alone, depending on the size of the vessel and the patient's symptoms. So in this particular case, uh, we tried to advance uh, the wire, but uh, uh, it was knuckled and was clearly in the subintimal space. But what we did is we inserted another wire into a large uh, first obtuse marginal branch and then tried with the second workhorse wire in the circumflex to get through that potential area of dissection, unfortunately without success. Given the significant stenosis in the left main, and the intermittent pressure dampening for which we had to engage and disengage the guide catheter. We per performed balloon angioplasty of the left main. That improved the stenosis, although we still have a significant lesion at the distal bifurcation. So the question now is uh, how to proceed next. We have uh, some better flow, but still there is relatively slow flow into the circumflex. We do have the distal left main bifurcation disease. We have a lesion in an obtuse marginal branch, which is fairly sizable, and we also have a significant proximal LAD disease. We ballooned the LAD that was um, highly stenotic. And then uh, the question was uh, about uh, the next step. We decided to try to re-enter into the true lumen in the circumflex using the Stingray balloon, which is a CTO equipment for undergrade dissection or re-entry. Unfortunately, despite using the double blind stick and swap techniques, sticking proximal to the proximal marker of the stingray balloon, and between the two markers of the stingray balloon, we were unable to successfully enter the distal true lumen. But we did have a timidity flow in the circumflex, and actually the patient was fairly stable without chest pain or EKG changes, likely 
because he did have significant pre-existing disease in the circumflex. We decided as a result to treat uh, the uh, bifurcations and what we have here are two adjacent bifurcations. We have the bifurcation of obtuse marginal one with a circumflex and then the distal left main bifurcation into the LAD and the circumflex and those are very close to each other. How to treat them? This is a general bifurcation algorithm. The first question is whether the side branch needs to be preserved. And in our case, both the obtuse marginal and the LAD obviously need to be preserved. And what is the likelihood of occlusion? And because both the LAD and the OM1 had significant baseline lesions, we thought that the, the risk was high. And that placed us into a planned two-stand strategy. The techniques for doing that, uh, if you have angulation less than 70 degrees, is the DK crash or culotte. Um, otherwise, um, this tenting can be done if the angulation is close to 90 degrees. We decided to use a DK crush in both bifurcations. And these are the 17 steps of DK crush that are described separately in uh, separate videos. But we decided to first treat the circumflex obtuse marginal bifurcation and then the left main bifurcation. So we predilate it and then place the, a stand from the obtuse marginal protruding into the circumflex. The stand uh, was deployed and then um, good result was uh, confirmed. We did have a balloon placed from the left main into the circumflex that was used to crush the stand. And then we rewired into the obtuse marginal branch and performed the first kissing balloon inflation. We like to perform two-step kiss inflation. The first step is to do high-pressure inflation on the side branch, the OM1 in this case. And the second one is lower pressure, usually 12 atmospheres, in both the main vessel, the circumflex, and the side branch, the obtuse marginal. We then placed a 3O by 15 mm drag eluting stand. This stand was actually the main vessel stand for the bifurcation of the circumflex obtuse marginal but it was the side branch stand for the bifurcation of the left main. The stand was deployed, we confirmed good distal flow, and then before crushing the stand, we used a, a Sasuki dual lumen microcatheter to rewire into the obtuse marginal branch, and that was a critical step to use the dual lumen, otherwise the stand here in the left main um, was probably not well opposed and there was significant likelihood of the guide wire going behind the stand struts. After doing that, we performed the second kissing balloon inflation into the circumflex obtuse marginal bifurcation. And then, after confirming a nice result, we crushed the circumflex stand by placing a balloon from the left main into the LAD. We now have an excellent result again into the circumflex. We then uh, decided to stand the LAD. It was a fairly long stand because there was significant disease close, all, going all the way close to the mid LAD. So we um, rewired the first kissing balloon bifurcation. And then um, we tried to deliver a 3 by 26 millimeter drag eluting stand. But what happened is that actually when the connection was made, the balloon of the stand was slightly inflated. You can see that the stand looks much fatter than one would expect. And actually this uh, came out fortunately. And then we used a new drag eluting stand to stand the proximal LED lesion. And then uh, um, after doing that, we took a 3.5 by 28 millimeter stand. And the choice of stand is important here because the 3.5 millimeter Zion stands can be expanded all the way to 5.75. So although it is 3.5 in the proximal LED, it can be taken to a much larger diameter into the left main. We did the proximal optimization with a 4.0 by 8 millimeter balloon. And then uh, after doing that, uh, we rewired into the circumflex, which was a little tricky. The second rewiring, unlike the um, first one, is best done during a distal strut, as happened in this particular case. And then we did the second kissing balloon inflation for the left main bifurcation with a 3.5 millimeter balloon into the LED and a 3.0 millimeter balloon into the circumflex. And this provided a nice result in the left main and the LED, as well as the proximal circumflex 
and the obtuse marginal branch. We still have very poor flow into the distal circumflex, but the patient was feeling well without chest pain or EKG changes. So we decided to let it be. And uh, he actually had an uneventful post-procedural course with plan to come back for repeat procedure in the circumflex. So several conclusions from this case, several lessons for me. The first one is that uh, even advancement of a workhorse guide wire can cause dissection, especially for highly stenotic and eccentric uh, lesions in tortuous vessel. When acute vessel closure happens, and it is due to dissection, as was likely the case in our patient, the first step is to advance a guide wire if there is not one already, into the distal true lumen and then stand. But unfortunately, here we were unable to do that. Fortunately, the patient did not have chest pain or significant EKG changes. And uh, although we tried to re-enter using Stingray balloon CTO techniques, that was unsuccessful. But because of the lack of significant symptoms and EKG changes, we decided to not treat that area of dissection. Then, when it came to the left main and the proximal circumflex OM1 bifurcation, we had an interesting scenario of two very close to each other bifurcations that were treated with a double DK crass technique. We did the DK crass in the circumflex obtuse marginal, and then the main vessel for that bifurcation was actually the side branch for the left main bifurcation. And uh, by combining DK crash twice with three stents total, both bifurcations were successfully treated. Thank you.